Hey everyone, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the 11th gen Intel processors, the i5-11600K and the i9-11900K. PCR Express 4, but is anything else actually new? Okay then peeps, so I was lucky enough to be sent the i5 and the i9, the new processors, although I've tested so many of these processors over the years, uh, it's kind of the norm, but they wanted me to test it on the Maximus, they actually sent the Maximus Hero as well. Uh, weirdly, when you look at the other review that I have done, because I've done a big roundup of all the motherboards as well, if you'd like to go and check that out, I'll put a link underneath. Uh, but you can go and find it on the channel as well. The uh, Maximus weirdly wasn't the strongest in the pack with a lot of the tests. But anyway, so it was tested on that and we did it on the 0611 BIOS. Now I will say for any of you out there that end up buying these, want to buy these, have bought these, keep an eye on the BIOS updates because there are a lot of microcode updates. I've actually heard just before going to film that there's an 0702 with new microcode on it, which is if, um, addressing some issues. And that's kind of a lot of what's been going on with these because there has been a lot of development really late on. The launch was meant to have been the 16th of March. It then got bumped out to the 30th. Samples were late. We were waiting for BIOS. They were trying to get ABT working correctly. Um, so just to skim over, just to give you a few kind of bullet points, i5 will boost up to 4.9 there or thereabouts, but you might get a little bit more. With the i9 it can go up to 5.3 and despite what we saw with the 10th gen, we did see the maximum clocks very easily with these ones and there weren't any nitty gritty caveats. With the uh, i9 though, Intel spec says it should float around 4.8 to 4.9 for uh, an all-core boost. The manufacturers are all going about things in a slightly different way though. So it actually makes the motherboard reviews kind of interesting to look at because I have seen some of them boosting to 5 and 5.1 all-core. And it all depends on your temperatures in your room and stuff like that. And temperatures are going to be... Uh, a thing for you to keep an eye on. Now we do have many, too many different versions of turbo now. So you have like the kind of normal boost clock and then there's uh, turbo boost three and then you've got multi-core enhancement and now we've got ABT. So I've done some stock stuff, basically with stock I've done Cinebench, some blenders and then some Sony Vegas runs. But most of the runs I've done I've actually turned on ABT. Now, it seems to be, from talking to some friends in the industry, something that most people have kind of turned their way, uh, head away from because they thought it was going to make Intel look a bit better in the graphs. But it does make them a little bit better in the graphs. But there's caveats with it with power draw and, most importantly, temperatures and how you contain those temperatures as well. So I've gone at it with a little bit more balance. I've not tried to make them look good in results because I have a lot of bad stuff to say about if you get these results, then you're going to be going death kind of scenario. So there's that to kind of keep in mind. And this review will be very, very chit chatty because in reality, watching benchmarks go around between the two is not really the way to go about it. I want to give you my thoughts on my using these. And although in gaming they've done well, in the other stuff, mm, not so much. So we'll, we'll yomp in and I'll show you some Cinebench stuff. Now strangely, the new i9 sits below the old i9, but that is because we, on the new, we've only got eight cores and 16 threads. And on the old one, there was 10 cores and 20 threads. So that does make a difference in these multi-threaded applications. Down below, when you look at the i5, it does sit just below the 5600X in the Cinebench stuff, 
uh, but it isn't too far off the beat, which works out kind of well. It's above the 3000 series, but just below the uh, 5000 series in this. We can flick onto the graph, which is the exact same data, but sorted in the single thread applications, just to kind of give you an idea of where it goes there. When we move on to Blender, again, the old uh, i9 is faster. The uh, i5 in this one actually is fairly strong because it's not far off the back of the 3800X. There may be some of you out there now that are going to ask where the 5800X is in my graph and it was actually something that I didn't get a chance to test. Uh, it arrived quite late and it arrived for a system build and why quite late, I mean the tail end of last year, and it arrived for a system build and I didn't get a chance to run a full suite of tests on it. So that's why it's not in here because I haven't actually done a complete review on it. It's not been removed, it's not been omitted, it's just not there because I haven't done the tests. Uh, so, uh, and the i5 in this one, it does quite well. Even though it's Blender and we're talking about less cores and stuff, I don't think it does too bad there. And that's going to be a mixture of clock speed and not necessarily clocks. But we do need to talk about pricing. Uh, and that's because uh, the dollar price for the i9 is 539 and the i5 is 262. So let's just say that they're going to come in around that same price in GBP. We don't actually know. Sometimes it's a little bit more because of tax. Sometimes it can be less because of exchange rate. At this present time, price is going to be up and down so much, I don't really know. I would actually like the i9 price to be below £500, if I was completely honest. And the reason for that is the AMD offerings. You've got the 5900X coming in around the £600 mark. More cores, fairly good uh, clock speed performance. Uh, but then you've got the 5800X, which does sit below less cores, but it's only £429. Uh, and then you've got the 5600X that comes in around the £300 mark. But if the price does go like for like, dollar to pound, it actually makes the i5 look OK because that is around where well, it's going to be $262. So if you get the i5 for around £260, £250, it could be a really strong contender here if you're just looking at gaming and that brings me on to the gaming graphs because with all of the results in the graph you can see here that the intels do go to the top of the all gaming graph and in that you've got far cry 5 shadow of the tomb raider total warhammer 2 and civilization 6. now the reason why we use these games is these games are actually cpu dependent changing the cpu does make a big difference to the game's performance some games don't really give a monkey, so that's the reason why we choose these. It's not to make Intel look better, it's not to, you know, pick the games that don't give a monkey. So there's no point me using a game in this which is graphics card heavy and the CPU doesn't really make a difference. So that's the reason why we chose these. When we separate them out into individual graphs, you get Far Cry 5, you can see the way things sit. Um, to be fair though, the 5900X with Precision Boost Overdrive on there actually performs really well when you consider it. But yes, it's a fair bit more expensive, but it's just to give you a little bit of balance there. We've also got the Total Warhammer ones and uh, I have done other ones which you can go and see on the website because we've done a lot more results on the website there's like 20 odd pages that you can go through and pick the graphs apart if you would like and for those of you out there that have been moaning about mobile stuff on the website it is has been coming we just had some pro problems with the data center last year so we've been having to do some upgrades behind the scene uh but we're now on yeah much better but the the mobile one is coming finally finally is coming it's just not a cheap thing to be able to do and it's not something i can do anyway so power draw with the uh 11 series was quite high with the i9 but that's because there's a lot more volts going on in there it does use more power but the i5 was okay cpu temperatures though oh my days so i used a h150i for this and at the moment you turn ABT on, I genuinely would say if you're going to be doing anything other than web browsing or incredibly light use on your system, you might as well just turn the fans onto max. It is mind bending how quick they can get hot. So even with some games, I was seeing 100 degrees temperature use. Um, anything multi-threaded, so Blender, for example, if you're going to do some video encoding, uh, edit a video, do a, a big layered up Photoshop for argument's sake. Basically anything strenuous, 
100 degrees you're going to see really easily. Now I was seeing 100 degrees with a blender run and that was with uh, 3000 RPM Noctua server fans on a H150i with the pump turned to max. Uh, it, it, they are incredibly, incredibly hot. But the weird thing is, in the Intel white paper, a lot of the performance ratings are rated with the CPU running at 100 degrees. So it's something that they're aware of. And they've basically pushed the envelope so much to make them look good in games that they do get ridiculously hot. Um, now, the other thing is, it's the first time that we've seen PCR Express 4 with uh, Intel anyway. Should have been last year. They've had lots of delays. They've had problems with yield. They couldn't get 10 nanometer working properly. So everything kept get bumping out. So this launch is pretty much what we should have had last year, but it's been delayed. And it, I say pretty much should have been, but it's still not 10 nanometer. It's still 14. So it's all been, they've been kind of ch running around chasing their tail. And the PCR Express 4 does work. We have got PCR Express 4, yes. But it's not actually as quick as the AMDs. So for argument's sake, I've tested the uh, A-Data Gamix recently on an AMD system, and it's how I did the, uh, the hard drive review. It was done with uh, an AMD rig, and I was getting 7.4 gig a second. So 7,400 and a bit on that on some of the benchmarks. Now, I've tested that on the Intel stuff, and I was only getting around 7.2, so 7,200. So then, because I do some really long cache tests, flushing the cache, massive, massive writes, it's had like over a terabyte written to it already, I thought to myself, well, to be fair, what I should do is pop it back into the AMD rig, go and test it again to see if it slowed down. And within a few meg, I got exactly the same results out as I did the first time around. So the Intel is at least 200 meg behind on that one single drive. Now, going from 7.4 to 7.2 isn't necessarily the end of the world. You're still getting incredible uh, speeds, but it's quite clear that the Intel is behind. Now, it was something I did mention to them, and they said, yeah, it's probably going to be something that we'll work with the vendors on with a BIOS update, and they think that it will get level out and either get incredibly close or pull them level level. So fair enough, it's early days, but at the time of making this review, they are behind. So the negative points are the PCI Express 4 hard drive speeds are a bit behind, and in reality, the i9 is ridiculously hot. It's good in games, but in multi-threaded, it's behind even the last generation Intel processor. So at that point, it's quite a difficult sell. It gets really hot but it's not as quick in multi-threaded stuff, it's okay for games. So the difference between the i9 and the i5 is actually really close and much closer than I thought it would have been. All of the AMD results are obviously done with the same graphics card. Yes, I am using a 2080 Ti, but it's just to kind of keep things fair. I don't want to kind of keep going backwards and like, yeah, we've done a lot of testing with the, the AMD stuff and I wanted to make sure that you had a, um, a good choice between the two and like I said the fact that they were all tested using the same driver as well kind of keep things fair. So in reality when they shout about the gaming performance I would say that yes the i9 is strong but it's so much more money that it actually makes the i5 look much better. Now we know the, the motherboards are all retardedly expensive uh, because they've had to add the PCI Express 4 in the boards are all ridiculous. So maybe like the B560 stuff, like the, the lower end boards, might actually then kind of swing in the i5's favour. You can still do memory overclocking, but what effectively that means is you don't have to have 3200 megahertz memory. If you buy 34, 36, 38, you'll be able to go into the BIOS and turn XMP on and it'll run that. Rather than having to overclock but above what the rated memory speed is, although you can do that, it just means that you can buy higher memory and it will run at its rated speed, possibly depending on how high up you go. But it does mean for me the i5 is the one to watch. Now it is going to depend on stock because if there is no stock it's not going to be a great deal of point. But the price is fairly aggressive already. Again we don't know what it's going to come to in the UK. If it's below £300 though I actually think it's the one to kind of keep an eye on. Match that up with a decent motherboard at a decent motherboard, a well-priced motherboard, and you could have a good gaming system on your hands. 
But the most important thing I can't stress enough with either of these is you are going to invest, need to invest a little bit more money on cooling. And that's something that you don't necessarily have to go in like nuts with with the AMD ones. But these you definitely will do. The i5 does float uh, with heavy threaded stuff below the 90 degree mark, which isn't too much of a problem. I would say, though, if you want to get the best from it, you are going to need an AIO and some decent setup fans as well, uh, just to kind of tame it and for you to get the best from it. I would say that with the i5, turning the ABT on, yes, it's going to make things hotter and stuff, but it does give you pretty much an auto overclock kind of uh, scenario. And when I get to spend some more time on them, I'm actually looking to do an optimization guide to kind of run you through some of the settings to be able to get it to run to uh, it, its best possible as well. And when you consider that the last BIOS we got sent was a week ago, and I've had to do these and all the motherboard reviews, it's been a busy week. So uh, there's more for me to come from this in time. Uh, but for now, the, the AMD stuff is still incredibly strong. What's limiting it a little bit at the moment is the fact uh, getting enough of the stock in the country. And it's only going to tell with time depending on how many Intel have had to these. Because I think in reality, if you're in the market to be you know, upgrading your system, are you going to wait six months to go one if the other's already around? That's going to be a choice that you need to make. I would definitely like AMD to flood the market with processes so that they're, then in reality, Prices will start to fall again, but let's be completely honest, we want them to do that with graphics cards more than we do processors. But anyway, so to recap, the i9 for me is a bit hot, too hot. Multi-threaded is just behind the last generation, which is quite a strange thing to say when you think about it. We're progressing, so you'd want it to be better, but it is good in games. It's topped a lot of the graphs in games. But in reality, the i5 was so close behind it that, for me, would be the uh, better buy. And normally I'd be all over the i9 because of, you know, higher clock speeds and all that sort of stuff. But this, it, it just, it does just make more sense. One thing I would think about, though, when you think about that is keep an eye on the prices between that and things like the 5600X and the 5800X because that's going to be your direct competition. You also need to think about the extra money that you're going to need to spend on cooling. And also, we already pretty much know that uh, for AMD and Intel, next gen is going to mean a new socket because we don't think that we're going to get AM4 again. And in fact, we know we're not going to get AM4 again. But Intel has Older Lake coming out probably at the end of the year, which is going to be a new socket. And it's just, it's just constant upgrade. So if you do want to go i5, uh, you do need to be thinking about the uh, possibility of the fact that if you then want to upgrade later on, you're only going to be able to upgrade processes within the same uh, socket stack. Um, and it's not necessarily going to mean that you're going to be able to get 12th gen and chuck it on your board because it's just not going to happen. So lots for you to think about, lots of chatting for me. I now need to get other videos done ready for launch day. I hope you've enjoyed this one because I have spent so long testing all of this stuff that, oh yes, pass me the coffee. Over 9,000. Some of the results were, but so were the temps. But for now, at least, this has been the tiniest one with another video for you. Out. Ding! Love you, sis.